Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Paul Adepoju, and I'm the community manager for the High CFJ Pamela Howard Forum on Global Crisis Reporting. Uh, when we talk about crisis, uh, it's a multifaceted uh, terminology that for us initially started with uh, our focus on the COVID-19 pandemic, but our scenes, uh, we've expanded our reach uh, to cover several other issues, including uh, climate change, political crisis, democracy, and several other issues that are relevant to our audience uh, spread across the world. And today, uh, this will be uh, this session will be focusing on how to help journalists, uh, especially those uh, that are interested in covering uh, the forthcoming. Uh, uh, election, a big election, November 8th election in the US, uh, during which uh, is usually referred to as a midterm uh, election, uh, which is a significant election because um, all of the 435 seats in the country's House of Representatives and uh, 35 Senate seats uh, will all be contested. And in addition to that, uh, more, at least 39 states uh, would have uh, gubernatorial elections. And um, there are several other issues uh, that the voters will be voting on on this particular election. And which means that even though the presidency is not on the ballot, uh, it's a really, really critical election that would have important uh, significance regarding uh, how the country proceeds. And uh, through the advent of technology, uh, social media has been an active place where individuals that have an interest and uh, political parties and his interest groups are trying to get their message across. And as journalists, how can we really tap into the data and insights that these political hacks can provide to be able to write uh, top quality stories? And um, for our global audience, uh, you can also begin to think and have an idea about how issues affecting the US uh, can be of relevance to your country. And also thinking about the existence or potential existence of a similar tool that we're discussing today, uh, how you can utilize it uh, to serve your audience best. So the tool I'm talking about is the Hard Observatory, uh, which is a project of NYU Cybersecurity for Democracy. And this tool provides access uh, to explore political advertising across Meta, which includes uh, Facebook and Instagram. And by providing transparency and insights on digital political spending, journalists can use the platform to identify top priorities uh, that are on the ballot as far as hard spending is concerned. They can also identify what issues are a focus for key battle states and how interests differ from one region to another. To take us through this process, uh, I'm glad to be joined by Nancy Watzman. Uh, how are you doing today, Nancy? And thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm yes, glad to have the opportunity. You. Yes, uh, thank you. So Nancy uh, is strategic advisor uh, for NYU Cyber Security for Democracy. Uh, Wasman is the director for Links LLC uh, that is based in Denver in Colorado. Uh, she's a, a strategist uh, that is specializing in developing and managing collaborations and partnerships to support journalists, technologists, and researchers in countering online dis and misinformation conducting investigations and increasing newsroom sustainability. Uh, she has an expansive and highly impressive, uh, <laughs> <laughs> including engagement in the media, for instance, uh, for instance, uh, she has written for numerous publications, uh, including the Washington Monthly, Apple's Magazine, and The Nation. As usual, before we go into Nancy's presentation, she has a beautiful presentation for us that is going to set the ground for our discussion today. We always like to engage with you, our participants, and have an idea of where you are from, and so that we can be able to provide some insights, guidance, and probably the realization of our discussions uh, for you today. So you can use the chat box to tell us where you are joining us from and um, your your interest or any other information that you can share with us. And um, if you're also joining us, if you're watching this live stream on Facebook, you can also actively engage with us. You can ask questions, you can pass comments and whatever you would like us to know uh, by using the chat box or comments box that is below the video that you are watching right now. And I'm going to stop there and 
give the stage to Nancy. So while Nancy shares our screen and um, so that we can start the conversation, I just um, want, yeah, I think she's already, there's no reason for me to ask more questions. Let's go into this presentation and I'll be back for the interactive session. So Nancy, the floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, as you said, lots going on as we head into these US midterm elections that affect not just the people in the US, but you know, um, as, as um, globally, right? And so, and, and of course, um, the Ad Observatory tool, which uh, we'll show in just a moment, um, is uh, something that obviously affects not just elections in the US, but elections worldwide. So it's really helpful to know about these tools and, and how you can use them, um, we hope to bolster reporting. So it's a project of Cybersecurity for Democracy, which is out of the NYU Tandon School for Engineering. Um, it's a uh, was founded by two cybersecurity engineers, Laura Edelson and Damon McCoy, who are super gifted researchers um, who have developed this kind of uh, approach that we need today in terms of figuring out what's going on with democracy, because it's kind of their contention that um, democracy has a cybersecurity problem, that because social media platforms have so much um, influence now and in how information is communicated, it's really important to be able to examine and hold accountable the kind of um, messaging that 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 flows over and see if they hew to their own rules that they have about political advertising and mis and disinformation, et cetera. Um, Paul already talked about who I am. Um, and so, you know, again, kind of scene setting. The US midterms is actually expected to draw more than $9 billion in spending. Um, it, th th these totals go up every single election. I've never seen an election that you know costs less. Midterms are generally less expensive than presidential years, but the general trajectory is always up, 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 up. And in just one month alone in September, a full $50 million was spent on Facebook and Google ads to try to influence opinion. But there's really, really lacking um, transparency for these platforms. It's really hard when you're a journalist to get a feel for what is going on, what your audience is seeing, because as we all know, the ads that I see might not be the ads that my neighbor across the street may see. Um, and research that has been done, you know, peer reviewed research by NYU and KU Leuven shows that Facebook has very, um, not a great record on even identifying political ads um, on the platform that, that um, and especially outside the US. Uh, as, as you move from the US, they have a, a, they have a um, worse and worse record of saying, even detecting what's a political ad and making it available for the public to see as a political ad in their ad library. Um, here you can see Malaysia, they, they, a full, almost half of the ads that came in that were political were not detected as political by Facebook. And that was a study um, that was published last year. So how does the uh, NYU Cybersecurity for Democracy team build this tool for you guys, this free public tool? Well, first they take, um, this is uh, this graphic's a little bit outdated, it should be Meta, not Facebook, but they take the ad library from Meta um, and they combine it with election information, pull it all together, analyze it in various ways, which we'll see, and then we provide this free public website. So I am gonna switch now pardon me for a moment, to a live view of the site um, so that we can all see it. Hold on one moment, sorry, a little bit of a technical thing as I, I toggle between these. So this is Ad Observatory. Um, and actually we're starting with a view I wanna show off. So adobservatory.org is where you need to go. It's a way to track to find trends, instant data visualizations around how political advertising is shaping up in the US midterm elections. And there's lots and lots of ways into this data that can inform your stories. Um, one of these, and this is what's pulled up right now, is this search by geography. So a lot of folks, for example, are interested to see what's happening in swing states in the US. Who's advertising? How are they advertising? What are these ads about? So this is a safe search. You can pick more, you can go to this region. 
select it, and you can pick all these states at once if you want, or you can pick one. And you get this instant thing back that shows that we've got almost $39 million in spending just over this 90-day period. You can play with these dates. And what you get are the splits between, um, between uh, parties. And you so you can see that Democrat and, well, it's left-leaning and right-leaning partisan lean types of organizations. Some of these are party and candidate committees, but some of them are outside groups, are spreading pretty evenly in the lead up um, in these states. And here you're going to get a list of the top spenders in those states. Um, so you can see, and if you follow US politics, some of these groups and follow political advertising, some of these groups will be um, pretty familiar. Uh, Work Money is, is a left-leaning group. Matt Walsh is a, a right um, leaning influencer. This is Beta Rourke from Texas, et cetera. The other thing that the ad library does is it analyzes, uh, the NYU team analyzes these ads for what kind of ad, what is this ad trying to do? And this can give you a lot of quick insights on, on the um, advertising. For example, as we get closer and closer to the election, we expect this show up bar to start climbing. That's where those are going to be ads that talk about um, that talk about the election. You know, say like come vote, um, come show up to this rally, make sure you you visit the ballot box. At this point, even a few weeks out, a lot of these are more around connecting. They're around um, here we are. You know, share your email address so we can contact you again and again. And this is starting to. Um, to shift a lot of times, donate is a major thing because that's about fundraising. Um, one tip is, um, and we'll see this in a little bit, um, is if this buy bar is large, that's often, um, that means that they're selling merchandise like you know hats or t-shirts or books. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a signal that there's something a little bit, um, I don't know, something worth investigating, I'll say. Uh, we also show these, these impressions and spend by demographic on that region view. So you can see the age groups that um, are, are, are getting to see this ad. And all this information comes from Meta itself, but the layers that we add on are things like this ad type. And that's going to become more obvious when I show some of these other views. I'm going to um, back up a moment. This is the front page of the site. So this is your way in. And I should note that everything we you can do is hopefully explained in this methodology section um, about how we go about doing what we do. Um, but you can always reach out and ask questions if you have a question about a particular thing. A big value add that the site does is provides you a way to search and instantly um, visualize by topic. So I'm gonna show you that and what these are are pre-research topics. So in the case of abortion, which is drawing a lot, a lot of spending in this um, election, especially by Democrats, if you just click there, it's going to take a moment, you again, instantly get back that total on how much is being spent on ads around the topic of abortion. This is going to include ads that say the word abortion maybe, but also might not say the word abortion. They might be using other terms to describe access to um, reproductive services or you know just various things because they want to give you a broad idea because a lot of times with the way advertising works, um, the actual keyword, if you just search for the word abortion, you're going to get a much smaller total. So this shows you again that Democrats are or left-leaning groups are outspending the right-leaning groups on the topic of abortion. Um, right up at the top, you quickly see that Planned Parenthood is the top spender. That's not a huge surprise. And you can go down and see it's a lot of Democratic spenders, but also this group, Focus on the Family, is a conservative group that is spending. Um, by the way, on all of these graphics, you can click over to the chart view and you can grab these numbers and put them into your own graphics and run them in your stories. We just ask that you cite us. So this gives you the, um, you know, the total and lean, et cetera, and you can and can look at it that way. Um, the other thing that this ver this view does is show you. I'm going to click over here. 
this shows you all the states where there's being uh, where money is being spent on ads about abortion and gives you these amounts. Um, so this is impressions actually. And then you can also look at spend. And these are the numbers. Um, so that can be really handy. Again, abortion is such a popular subject to advertise on. This is a really big long list with a lot of money. Some of the topics you're gonna see are gonna have a smaller spend. The other thing you can do from topic, um, because we heard after we ran this tool in 2020, that folks wanted to have a little bit more of a feel for what was going on in other languages. We have developed this view where you can look at Spanish language advertising about abortion. Um, it's gonna be a much smaller total and that's both because there's less advertising in Spanish, but also because we use a pretty conservative methodology for how we figure out whether an ad is in Spanish. We're still tweaking that model, et cetera, and expect to, um, continue to make methodological changes to best capture Spanish language. But what we do hope is that um, this kind of uh, expertise we're gaining and how to detect languages in ads will become really useful in global elections. So for example, it's easy to um, set up a similar ad observatory covering an election in another country. And I should say, if you're from another country and you have an upcoming election, and you would be interested in partnering with, with us on setting up that kind of a project, we would love to hear from you. Um, but you can see that it's gonna be a different list of actors often when you look in Spanish, and then these groups can be really interesting to look at. Um, so let's look at moving Arizona ahead. This is another view I'd like to show you guys. You can look at an individual ad sponsor. In this case, it's a group called Moving Arizona Ahead. And you can see the similar kinds of data visualizations for what kind of ads are they running? And here we can see their spending pattern over time. They're, they're declining right now, but they were just at a peak. A lot of these right now at this point in the election cycle, the, the line is going up, up, up. <laughs> and um, you can see again that uh, they're spending mostly in Arizona. Now there's another handy feature if you're looking at a particular sponsor and you wanna see, okay, but I want to see what's in these ads. What are these Spanish ads about abortion in Arizona? You can click over to the Meta Ad Library, and it will show you the ads that that sponsor is running. And you can see there's a bunch of ads here in Spanish that are about abortion. And you can look at those and, and see if that's useful for your reporting. Um, sorry, I'm having a little... Transferring back from window to window is not elegant. Um, so, so that's that. By the way, also, we do have um, the entire site is available in Spanish. So that's another thing that we did this election cycle that's brand new. And it's something that, again, we want to develop um, going forward. So this is useful around the world, not just um, in the United States and English speaking countries. So, um, you know, we talked a little bit about sponsors. I'm gonna show you the kind of thing that you can find sometimes when you start to research. I have this pulled up already. Um, all right, so this is a particular group that I found uh, a few weeks ago when I was doing some research for um, a partner organization around um, gun, gun, gun issues. That's a topic that we have um, that you can search. And this group, 2A Amendment Rights for 2022, is a, a gun rights focused group. And there's they at the time when I was first looking, this line was up here. They've been declining in the last few weeks, but they were going up, up, up. And I noticed that they had this high bar for the buy kind of ad. That's what I mentioned before, that that um, you know, they're selling something. What are they selling? So I was curious. Um, so I I clicked over to the ads on Meta. And I have this pulled up already for you guys. And I found kind of classic ways that people can use Facebook advertising to target particular populations um, in, a, in a kind of negative way. So you can see, here's this ad. This is in English. This is uh, a scary looking Joe Biden with his finger up, you know, and they're selling this book or they're giving away this book. So that's probably why this was, you know, might've been coded as buy. And um, they're talking about a, a really like highly controversial local issue. It sounds like someone was shot um, and, and there was some issue that happened. 
And so what you look at though, you see this ad and then look over here. This is the same exact ad, but in Filipino. And then there's a similar ad in Vietnamese and then also in Spanish. So that's a good example of the way that advertisers sometimes use these um, uh, use these various methods on Facebook to, to send messages to particular communities that you can find if you dig in. The other feature that we have, um, very important right now, is going to be our election feature. So with the elections upcoming, you may want to see how a particular race is shaking out. That's highly competitive. So in this case, let's look at Pennsylvania U.S. Senate. That's one of the big ones being watched. And um, you'll see here that you can instantly see this comparison of how Oz and Fetterman are using Facebook, namely that Fetterman's using it a lot more, spending a lot more. Um, and uh, that's been consistent over time. And you can also do this quick look. This can be really handy. What are their ads focusing on? What are the topics that they cover? And then if you click down to the map, that's also super interesting because you can see that Fetterman is spending all around the country. He's kind of a, a he, he's, he's, he's um, kind of running a national campaign even though he's running a campaign in Pennsylvania. He's like fundraising all over the country. Whereas Oz um, is both spending less and spending in fewer places. And again, you can click over to table view to grab those details if you want. Um, I'm gonna go back here for just a moment to show you some examples of how people have actually used this in stories. Because I just threw a bunch of stuff at you, but then um, what do you do with all that? Like, how do you actually write a story? What kind of thing can you have? Well. We have a lot of reporters using the site to do things. And, you know, it's really, I like to think about this as like, there's some things that are just, uh, you can almost write a story just by looking at one view on, on the site. And in this case, these uh, reporters at the Philadelphia Inquirer used that election search that I just showed you guys on Fetterman versus Oz, and they wrote a story about it. They wrote about how um, Fetterman's um, really concentrating a lot on Facebook where Oz is, is not. Um, and that was a story that just came out last month. Um, another kind of story you can do that's slightly more complex is this one that was done um, by Reuters. It, it takes just a little bit more time, but not a ton more time. They compared the spending that DeSantis was running over two different time periods and showed that, and were able to see that in the first time period, he was mostly spending in Florida. And then later he was spending nationally and they use that as kind of the framework for a story about how he might be setting himself up for a presidential run. Then here's another story you can do about trends using our topics. This reporter used our topic for abortion, looked at the group spending, um, classified them by whether they were um, pro or anti-abortion um, rights or uh, et cetera. And they ran this database. And so that was, they did this right after the big Supreme Court decision, um, which was why it was like a, a nice timely story to run. And that was way before the election really heated up. We also just ran this quickie analysis ourselves this past week with our topics where we, I, we pulled down all the topics that were drawing more than a million dollars in spending and then compared the left and right leaning um, spending on that. And, as you can see on these topics, um, only uh, the topic of economy is drawing more spending right now from the right than the left. And so that's just kind of an interesting way to contextualize what's going on in the US midterm. So that's another idea of things that you can do. Um, so the one other thing I wanna show you really quickly, and then we can move to a discussion is keywords. So we've talked about topic as a way to get a broad view of what's going on in some ads. Um, but you can also, if you really want to drill down and look at ads that just mention a particular word, you can do that. And, you know, um, so for example, you can look at, uh, um, these are just pre-suggestions. So this is the word aborto in Spanish. 
and look, there's not very much spending, but you can get that instant data visualization and then click on these different sponsors and you might find things that are interesting. Um, you can, you know, lately there's been a lot of talk about crime. So I'm going to type in crime. Whoops, I first need to um, fix that, pardon me. I'm going to do that. So what are we seeing on crime? 33.84, still not a lot of spending, but interesting. And here's all these groups that might be worth further exploration. Now we do also have a topic, by the way, and the topics are explained in the methodology. Um, so you can um, look there and see again how we do that. But we do have a law enforcement topic, which is kind of a proxy a kind of a bigger set than what you're going to get on um, that keyword search on crime. So you can see that draws a lot more money. You can see, whoa, that's going way up. So we are capturing something there. Um, there seems to be more, and it seems to be kind of a mix of kinds of sponsors in terms of ideology that are spending on it. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing that might be worth um, digging into. So with all of that, that's kind of my song and dance. There's lots and lots of stuff, as you can tell, you can do with this, but it's also the kind of thing that um, is really good to click around yourself um, so that you can um, figure out how it works. It's pretty intuitive. We stand by with, uh, we're very available to answer questions or help you with your stories um and help provide the context also if you're looking for someone an expert to be quoted in your story once you've done your research you can reach out and we can hook you up with uh the folks here to to do that for you so with that i'm hoping that we can talk a little bit um about uh other ideas and things you'd like to to use the site for yes so thank you thank you thank you very much and um Okay, so what are they? Can we we can stop the sharing the screen? Oh sure, sorry. Although we we'll still come back, we we'll still share us some things about how to. Do yeah, yeah. Things. If we need to, we can go back in. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is more like you showing us how to do things session. So the first question that uh, I got was, um, how can we say? the political has on social media translates into actual political spending. For instance, when you have candidates that are deciding to um, aggressively spend more on TV, on billboards, more than political or social media, is it necessary to follow that um, somebody that is out spending the other on social media uh, is actually out spending the other candidate on other channels? Yeah, I mean, they're apples and oranges, right? Like, you know, there's such different types of media and TV is always going to be also a very important way that um, candidates in the US reach out to people. Um, but it can be used for, you know, social media advertising is a lot less expensive than TV and it can be more um, tuned more finely to specific audiences than TV. Um, so it's it's important to monitor all these things. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the, our transparency and requirements for transparency don't make it easy. Um, but it is important if you're getting a want to get a full picture of a candidate to try to look at all these different media. Yes. So the first uh, thing, uh, okay. Before I like I would like Nancy to catch up very very well. So for our kind for our, for our members. Um, this uh, uh, particular session um, can actually, uh, if you can use this uh, to actually write a story, uh, it qualifies you for a monthly story contest that includes um, our cash prize, monthly and all the, sign, uh, the certificates. So we do that monthly. So um, one thing, one the way that I would like us to start by helping you to, on how you can use this is, um, let's say, Nancy, um, I'm interested in health issues. Um, my interest has to be on, let's say, um, because the US uh, is the leading supporter or founder of a lot of global initiatives. Uh, you mentioned sure. uh, abortion, preventive care. And um, 
I want to write a story that provides uh, implications of what the US policies post election can be, depending on which candidate uh, wins. So which means I won't just be focusing on one candidate or how do you think I can achieve that? I mean, so first I would do a quick exploratory. Let me tell you, there's more than one way to do this, right? Like, um, yes, yes. and I'm going to show you, whoops. Um, oh, okay. Sorry, that's better. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Yeah, so sorry about that. Um, I think first what you would, the first, very first stop I would do if I was interested in health issues, I would be like, who's spending the most on that? Um, I would look at our healthcare topic and I would say, let's look. Um, so here we go. So I'm gonna see, oh, look, and this is consistent with that graphic I showed before that Democrats seem to be spending more than um, uh, right-leaning groups on most of these issues or topics that we're tracking. This is kind of interesting. Look, these are the top spender spenders on uh, the healthcare topic, according to our analysis. And a bunch of them are yellow. And yellow just means we haven't categorized them yet. It doesn't mean they're... So that means that's telling me, first of all, that this line is a little bit incomplete because there's sort of all this. This is all the spending. We have a bunch that's not categorized yet, but that you might be able to research and kind of figure out who they are. Um, so then what I would do is I would spend a little time clicking around. Well, let's look at well, Johnson & Johnson is not categorized here, but we know what, who they are. Let's look at what they're spending. They had some big hike here. Um, I just kind of look around, see what's going on. They seem to be spending a ton in Kentucky. I'm not sure why that is. That's kind of interesting, but around the country. And then maybe I would look and see, I'm gonna go over to Meta and just sort of see um, what's going on. Um, so these ads look like they're, okay, there's some ads around mental health. There's an ad in Spanish. It might just be kind of interesting to see, well, what, what are they spending? Because like a lot of companies like Johnson & Johnson are spending on Facebook. So I would spend a little time clicking around, familiarizing myself, who are the big spenders on healthcare um, would be one thing. And just kind of figure out like, who are they? What do they want? You know, this is a union or two unions are here. Oh no, three, four. <laughs> a bunch of unions have a lot to say about healthcare, right? So that's not super surprising, but it might be interesting to look at them. If I saw, so SEIU is spending big, I could go over. And one thing we haven't talked about yet is using other sites in conjunction with, with ours. Um, there's an organization of folks aren't familiar called Open Secrets, and they track money and politics. And what you can do is look at the SEU, SEIU here. And you can see, I might look at what they're lobbying on. Whoops, that didn't work. But there's a way that you can jump in. Let's look at lobbying actually. And I can look at SEIU. And then I can look these folks up and they actually have their lobbying reports and you can look and see what issues do they care about or you may also just know from your own familiarity with healthcare, et cetera, kind of what these groups are up to, what they're supporting, et cetera. Um, so that's where I would start. And sorry, I'm meant to click back over to here. There we go. Sorry, I hope I'm not making anyone dizzy because I'm making myself dizzy here. Um, so that's the way I would start. And then the other thing I would do is maybe look at some of the swing states that's one view we haven't looked at. Um, and, you know, if there's some, you know, like think about those races that are again in hot contention where the balance is in Congress, the swing states, and look at some of those states. So let's look at Nevada maybe, because that's another place that a lot of people's eyes are on. And yeah, let's just look at that? the- Okay, sorry, Nancy, why you did that? I also wanted to, for international, uh, audience that are not aware of the concept of swing state. Do you, how can oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, key state. Is, do you have a tab like that? Do I have a what? Do you have a tab like that on the website that can show how you, you can just know the key swing states? 
Yeah, so that's the one that I started with um, originally. You can put in more regions. It's not, um, it's not unfortunately, we don't have it as an, uh, a search option, but um, you can put in, I'm just gonna do it here. Like if I wanted to look at ne uh, Nevada and Pennsylvania together, you can look at other sites for um, the list of swing states that you're interested in, and then you put them in together. This search takes a little while longer, a uh, little longer to load than some of the others, but I promise it will load and it will return those data visualizations. Um, so the other thing you can do, by the way, is if you are, well, we looked at Johnson & Johnson, but if there's another big healthcare organization or company or candidate um, that you wanna look at, you can do that here in the sponsor search. So again, we looked at Johnson & Johnson, you get that quick, quick thing. So it's a little bit of, that's how I would do it. I mean, you could do a very simple story on who are the top spenders on healthcare. That's like the first step. Um, but then if you want to dig in, you might want to have your own list of companies or organizations that you know are influential that you may want to check out between us and use some of those other resources like Open Secrets to figure out where the biggest, like you could go over to Open Secrets and figure out who's spending the most on lobbying on a particular healthcare issue. And then you could go back over to our site and look at who's doing the most on Facebook. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I hope uh, uh, our audience that you are following this, you can actually play around. You can use the terminology if you know a big player that is actively also involved in your country. That can be the hook, for instance, Johnson & Johnson, like she used, maybe active, maybe the leading vaccine, producer of the vaccine, COVID vaccine that is being used in your country. So that can be a way to connect it and I like their interest in the US upcoming elections. You can also look at topical critical issues that are of relevance to your audience locally. And also if there are candidates that are of your origin, for instance, if you have Black American, if I have a Nigerian American candidate, I can write story for a Nigerian audience around how this person is performing, the key yes. priority for that campaign. You can write that to if we have Indian Americans and any other origins or any other key issue that are of your of relevance to you. So please and please uh, go around the tool, play around with it and uh, have fun. So there are some questions. Um, let's suspend this screen sharing for a moment. Sure. I think you, you mentioned, you already answered it in the passing, but I would like to run through everything. And um, oh, Okay, how was the data retrieved from political has has spending from the repository? Uh, did you do any sieving? Did you do any cleaning? What, or is it just directly pulling all this data from Facebook alone? Uh, yeah, so what we do is we pull it directly from Facebook. Um, we don't clean it so much as add layers of analysis on top of it. And the layers of analysis include those topics. You cannot find that on Facebook. That's not something they provide. Um, we do. Um, we also have those classification of the ad types, the buy versus persuade versus connect. That's not something Facebook provides. Um, and so we add that value add. Um, the, the, the meta ad library is still very useful if you're looking for uh, particular examples of ads because we don't have those on our sites currently. Okay, the next question. Uh, political messaging is usually about rhetoric. Can we also use this tool to measure spending on negative advertising? So you could, but we don't have that pre-digested for you. You would need to come up with a set of ad sponsors you wanna look at um, for whatever reason, and then you could go back in and then you could look at our totals for spending, which by the way, that's another thing that we provide because it's an estimate. Anybody who's looked at the Meta Ad Library knows that they only report spending in ranges, which is not super useful. Um, so anyway, you can come up with your list of advertisers. Maybe you wanna look at the top political advertisers in a particular region or something then you can look at their ads and kind of figure out the uh, the negative ads, et cetera. But it would be some work. Yeah, there's also this question about uh, the impact of the size of the candidate's spending on the candidate's chance of winning. Do you think there's any chance that a candidate without a large financial backing on uh, how much indication does the massive nature of the amount of... Right. I mean... Is spent 
Yeah. Spending yeah. is just spending is just one metric. And our project in particular doesn't study those kinds of patterns of winning and, you know, that's more of a, a job for the political scientists. I would say that the Open Secrets Organization that I mentioned, um, they've done a lot of research about that. And it is true that overall, historically, currently, that the biggest spender usually wins um, in a race, but that's not just spending on Facebook. Um, and there's always exceptions to that rule. Yeah, great. Another really interesting question. Uh, does ad spending on topics by either by parties show their focus, or is it that the topic is more debated and gets them uh, more engagement? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the topics are what changes the most, right? You know, election by election. We have kind of a process where we look at the incoming ads because there's always new things um, that very much follows the news cycle and the interest in what's under debate. And then there's always like new terms every election that pop up that become kind of the um, the new thing. You know, like in, in a previous election, for example, talking about immigration, there were a lot of advertising uh, talking about caravan coming up from um, the south of the country. And so there were a lot of ads about that. Um, and we would expect and are watching out for uh, what becomes trending and popular, et cetera, to use in ads. Yes, is this also the question of using this tool to actually screen for disinformation in political advertising? How can that be done? Yeah, so that example I gave with the gun group where um, I think usually the way it is, is like you can look at our site, like start, start with a topic search or start with um, uh, something uh, or a region search or something like that, and then drill down at the sponsor level, at the advertiser level, and then look at the ads over on Facebook and look for those kinds of signals like what I was looking there. Like is one like one ad being focused on a bunch of communities in different language. And you know, that ad I showed was kind of a classic negative ad where, you know, there's dark colors, someone looks scary. They do that on TV too. And um, so those are the kinds of things to look out for. Uh, but you, it's, it is kind of painstaking work. You have to go over and look at the examples of the ads. There's no way on our site to just say, let me find disinformation. <laughs> I wish, I we all wish that is so simple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do. Yeah, there's also this interesting question around um, from which year uh, is the data, the data is available on the platform? On which year? Yeah, um, this is just 2022 right now. Um, okay. We did run this project. We have in our project kind of archives. We have historical data. If um, someone's really interested in poking around at that, we might be able to arrange how to get it to you. But right now, the site is um, 2022. And it's US focused for now. But it, the, the whole idea is we're building an infrastructure that's really um, portable, you know, so it could be used in any, uh, any part of the world, really, since these companies are global, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, talking about global, talking about global, um, there is also this question uh, now taking it um, to the Indian election. There is a lot of, if you look at Indian elections, there is a lot of Americanization. There are a lot of trend following and hard spending. But here it's a multi party system and the hard right. spending is also used for mod slinging. So, which means the classic keywords are initially used. So, yeah. you know, yes, what are your thoughts on that? So that's exactly why we developed the topic search, because that's exactly right. Um, like I was mentioning, and that happens here too in the US, like that when we were talking about immigration, sometimes ads about immigration never mention the word immigration. You know, they use these code words that for um, different political extremes recognize as being about it, like the caravan would be used by right leaning or another keyword search suggestion we have is the word woke because woke is a, a word used by a lot of right-linging organizations to kind of signal a bunch of things. So I think in every country, it's going to be very, very specific about what are the terms used and the topic modeling is going to have to be different, et cetera. And one of the research questions that the team is exploring is how to build these kind of nimble topic models um, to reflect those kind of uh, different languages and different ways that things can be expressed. So what you're saying is um, a better approach to get a truer picture of any issue, uh, instead of using the codes, instead of using the keywords, is to look at it from the topic perspective. That's kind of like the big top level. What I would say though, is you can use the keyword search. 
I, I didn't show you guys this, but you can actually do Boolean searches. So you can kind of show us. <laughs> you want to show? Okay. Um, so you can, yes. do, you can do that to kind of develop your own. Um, okay, I'm going to scare every. I don't want to scare everybody again by uh, showing my no. whole screen, um, <laughs> which is scary to me, believe me. So let's say you decided, I don't know. I, I'm just going to do a nonsense thing here, but you can do, whoops, actually you do plus. Um, you can do crime plus violent plus, um, I don't know, uh, dogs. I'm just, <laughs> you know, whatever. And that would be the equivalent to and, right? And in the methodology, we have this book, keyword search thing. So like, here we go. Let's look at, um, here's, um, let's try this one out because I haven't tried this one out recently. This is a a setup example Boolean search for folks. That's elections focused. So we can see, okay, that's not yielding that much. So you can play around with these connectors. The, the, this line means or, um, so you can use parentheses, you can do that. And so you can really hunt around and make it very specific to what you need. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, next question. Um, why do you think that the left has been spending more money on ads as opposed to the right? What can you factually say on that? Right. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, it's, first of all, this isn't the whole picture of all the spending. As we discussed, there's lots of different media, there's lots of different social media platforms, and there's TV, etc. So I wouldn't necessarily say that what I showed shows that Democrats are outspending Republicans. Um, the other thing is the way we do topics, a single ad campaign can have more than one topic assigned to it. Um, Cause think about how advertising is like, you might be talking about abortion and crime and the same ad. So they don't add up to um, a whole. Um, I think it's interesting that again, it, there seems to be such a clear pattern that the um, right-leaning groups are concentrating on the economy. Um, that's the big takeaway I would say there that they're, you know, and you know, anybody who's followed US politics knows that um, left-leaning groups tend to be more diffuse in their messaging and right-leaning tend to be laser focused. So it's not necessarily, um, it, it shows a lot of discipline maybe, or that would be what the question I'd want to explore is that they're really concentrating on economic issues for this election. Yes, thank you very much. Next question. Hey, Nancy, you mentioned <laughs> that when the buy, the bar for the buy segments of the graph is high, it needs more investigation. Could you elaborate? Yeah, so I mean, they're just kind of signals for what that particular advertiser or group of advertisers are doing with their ads right now. It's kind of, what's the purpose of the ad? It's it's um, it's to give you a clue on, are they trying to get your email? Are they, are they harvesting? Are they using this as a name harvesting thing? Are they using it to try to get you to show up somewhere? Or do they actually want you to buy something? And some of the scammier ad campaigns tend to have that buy signal because you know, we've also seen lots of cases here in the US, and I'm sure this is true globally, where people will also use, um, actors will also use political type advertising to do consumer scams. You know, to, like they might target a particular kind of voter and then try to sell them an insurance policy. And so that's why it's kind of interesting to look at that buy. If that buy thing is high, I'm like, oh, I wanna go see what examples of that are. <laughs> But sometimes okay. it's just Joe Biden hats, you know, like sometimes it's not, it's like just normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, I think um, that answers the question. Um, okay, okay, I was finding that other question that you have. I'm just reading the comments, I think you had to. Um, okay, so somebody is asking for clarification on the lobbying law culture that is in the US. Um, and um, this person is asking for access to Meta Heart Library, whether it's accessible to everyone. 
Um, so, so I'm sorry, the question the is so, access um, to. Yes, Met, Met has had library. Is it accessible to everyone? Um, you know, I do know, actually, I was just speaking to a reporter from Canada the other day who was telling me that her view was different from my view. We were looking at the same view of Meta Ad Library and it was a bit different. Um, so that's not something I have deep knowledge about what the differences are, but I do know that sometimes the views can be different on the Meta, Meta Ad Library site. Um, but I don't know if folks are familiar. I mean, I can, there is a, um, I mean, we can get it from just looking at a sponsor really quickly. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, the Meta Ad Library, the, the URL, see, you can, you can, this is it. Uh, if you just Google for Meta Ad Library and you can look country by country for different things here. But what this is, is like, I guess the way we describe it is what you can find on the Meta Ad Library largely is um, kind of the trees and we're showing you the whole forest on our site. But then if you wanna go back and find a particular tree, then Meta Ad Library is very useful. I don't know if that answers the question, but I hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's providing some forms of clarifications. Yeah, another question is, um, how do we expect uh, to write, uh, how can we reliably say that this is a true state of things when it leading up to the elections, um, this ad spending may actually increase and what we think holds true in the current story may actually change in a couple of days. I'm not quite sure what, what the question is. Okay. The... So how can we be, can we, can these stories be tied, tied to a time period? Or for instance, as we approach this November 8th election, let's say a candidate that has not been spending much on the topic uh, is now able to pump much more money into that race, uh, switching what we think is true to be the person that is spending more on the topic uh, to change. So how can we write uh, a story uh, that stands the test of time when the issue or the spending- Oh, actually... right. I mean, look, this, these are snapshots, right? They are definitely snapshots. Um, it's, I, you know, uh, what is it the saying that, that journalism is, a, it's the first version of history or something like that, you know? I mean, um, I'm not sure about standing the test test of time uh, over the, it's an accurate picture of what's going on right now. And um, and then it's also possible always to go back and do retrospectives and deep dives and, and analysis um, later. But this is meant to give you a very quick view of what's happening this minute. It's like very much of the moment. Yeah, probably this would be a suggestion. I'm seeing a lot of questions that probably when you add all of these features, <laughs> your, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will not be what you had in mind. This person is asking about content moderation. Uh, is ah. it possible to get insight on ads that were not approved, which are quite interesting? Um, can we yeah. explain this? This, I mean, our project as a whole is very interested in those issues, but this tool is not designed to do that. Um, but there, the team is doing research actively around um, how ads get approved or not approved. In fact, we have some research that may be coming out in the next week around that, um, that we're doing in partnership with Global Witness. So um, we're very interested in those issues. We do research in those issues, but Ad Observatory is uh, more of a tool to kind of give insight of what actually is uh, is labeled as a political ad by by Meta. Yeah, I wanted to give. Um, uh, we, you've done this, but those that are joining us, um, if you have your way, what kind of stories or what story leads do you think uh, your current users of the platform they've not used uh, it? That well, you like to look, one of our main um, things we think should change is there's no rules right now on what a political what a what a digital platform has to make transparent to the public there's no kind of uh and and so we advocate for universal transparency on ads period so not just political ads just all ads running on these platforms 
Um, and we believe that should be mandated. We have information on our website, cybersecurityfordemocracy.org, about what we think ought to be disclosed and how under the policy tab. Um, and we have a bunch of other ideas there too about policy changes we would like to see. So I would see it, say any stories that kind of point out not just what are the trends, but also kind of give a nod toward um, this need for better information. You know, it's it's it's, you know, if you can always put in the context of a story, like this is what we know, but there's so much that we don't know. And the reason we don't know it is because this is not required. You know, we have to trust uh, Meta to identify these political ads, et cetera. So I think that's really important because if there's universal transparency, that's gonna make all the journalists all over the world's job, you know, we can then access that data to see what's going on. Um, and right now it's limited. Yes, I one thing that I also wanted to mention is the fact that uh, we have elections happening across the across the world. Uh, my country Nigeria is also happening having an election next year, and um, elections are also happening elsewhere. And tools like this uh, would be really really helpful uh, for journalists. I know you cannot do everything for the global audience, and hopefully you get local partnerships to make these tools available for everybody. Uh, we are running out of time, so what will you say? What will be your uh, my second to last question is, um, how do you expect this uh, database, uh, the political hard on um, social media landscape to evolve or change as we move towards the November 8th election? Um, I think we're just going to see a big crush of additional um, advertising in these next couple of weeks. And it's going to be hard to track. It's going to be hard to figure out what's going on. Um, it's just going to be an onslaught. It's a, it's a very crucial election in the U.S., and a lot of people have a lot at stake. And so I think we're going to see a lot more. So we need journalists watching. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course, our journalists will be watching. And um, yeah, so yeah. what are your last words uh, for journalists? What are your... Um, um, you know, thank you for all the hard work that you guys are doing. Um, I am really only an email away. If you have any questions, I do look at email and answer. Um, we'll try to help you to the best of our ability. We obviously, our small team um, can't do every complicated research request that comes our way, but we do try to be helpful. We're open to partnerships. You can join our newsletter list. Cybersecurityfordemocracy.org has a sign up. Um, and again, we are interested after we're all done with this election, we're gonna be figuring out, you know, what are our next projects, et cetera. So we're always open to talking to folks. Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Nancy. As 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 we promised, uh, it's a, it has been an act, actively engaging session. Lots of questions and um, yeah, definitely. Yes, uh, as I'm even trying to wrap up, I'm having a question in my mind. But okay, in quick seconds, uh, do you think um, the hard political hard uh, watchdogs uh, have made any changes? Uh, stemming from the experience of the last general election and um, what loopholes do you still think still has a specific loopholes? Yeah, I mean, I think the main loophole is that it's in the in the platforms we're supposed to trust. You know, they come out with these rules every time. Like, here's a good example. This is a good thing to end with. Last time around, Facebook said they would ban uh, political ads, have a moratorium over, I think it was like, you know, the week leading up to elections. They're doing it again this year. But we did an analysis, the team did an analysis after the 2020 elections and showed that Facebook didn't do a good job of following its own moratorium. You know, there were ads that slipped through um, and that were political and it was pretty easy to game it. The advertisers who wanted to get around those rules could figure out how to do it pretty easily. So, um, you know, that's the issue. We're expected to, there's not a lot of, um, that's why journalists are so important. We need to show how that's like kind of not an acceptable situation where we're just depending on um, on, on on what the company says it's doing is and and how can we figure out whether they're actually doing it. Yes, thank you. I promise that's the last question. So thank you very much, Nancy, for joining us today. Thank you very much for our participants joining us from different parts of the world for your active participation, for your contributions, for your questions. And hopefully this, uh, Nancy takes this and um, she says she's only
those available to help you out if you're working on any story. And like I said, I encourage you to use this platform to write relevant story for your audience to enter our monthly story contest. And um, this will be really, really great. And um, so that is where we are going to uh, draw the curtains today. Uh, to learn more about the International Center for Journalists, uh, check out, uh, especially this initiative, uh, check out ICFJ's website on www.icfj.org. If you are not a member of our Facebook forum, I encourage you to be part of that active Facebook forum. Uh, check us out on Facebook and um, you will see the link uh, in the chat box. Just click the link directly. It is going to take you to the Facebook forum. And uh, that is where we share insights, tools, information, and uh, any other additional resources that we can share on this subject matter. The International Journalist Network, IGNet, also has a very expansive repository of tools and resources for you to use your topical issues across different aspects of your career and at different stages. So do not hesitate to join uh, to check them out now. Uh, Stella is putting the chat is putting the links uh, in the chat box. So check them out and actively engage with us. So on behalf of my entire team, uh, especially on behalf of uh, Stella who is doing the tech background and everybody at the ICFJ that is directly or indirectly actively involved in ensuring the success of these sessions. I want to say thank you for joining us today and we'll see you some other time. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye from me. All right. Thanks so much for the opportunity and look forward to seeing you um, in the follow-up. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.